Hey everyone, welcome home. Happy New Year and welcome back to the Welcome Home YouTube channel. So I thought the best way to start off the new year would be looping you back in with a house renovation update. This is where the whole Welcome Home journey started. I am currently in the process of renovating my dream property and this is what sparked my interest in going to see all these different houses and then you guys ended up loving it. We were touring them, sharing them and yeah, my my project is getting there. It's, I think we're about six weeks away. So, I mean, we say that, it, let, let's add a few on just for luck, but I thought I would fill you in, let you know where we're at, and I have so many clips to show you of the house where it's at now. So just a bit of background, I bought a Victorian terrace property and decided to turn it into my dream home. So this is not a flip, this is not a project to make money, add as much value as possible, this is a project to create a home that I intend to live in for so many years to come, which actually influenced a lot of the decisions that I made along the way. So this is what the house looked like when I first bought it. I knew immediately, I'll link the video down below where I told the whole story of purchasing the house, but I just knew as soon as I walked in. As soon as I walked through the gate, the house already felt like mine, but as you can see, it was a very tired house. It basically hadn't been given much love and I, even more so felt like it was the right thing for me because I was like, wow, it's time for me to inject some love back into this home. So the first thing that I did was rip everything out. I had the place totally gutted whilst I was getting all the plans together for what I wanted to do. And this was such a great decision because I could see like structurally if stuff needed doing. I mean, obviously I had a structural survey when I bought the house, but you know, the things you don't see like woodworm and things like that, I had a little bit of woodworm and it was great to be able to strip everything back and see those things. So some of the main things with the house that I wanted to change, I wanted to extend the house out the back on the ground floor. The house did have a loft conversion, although a very bad one. I basically wanted to extend the house on the ground floor to match the rest of the houses on the street because this is a, quite a typical thing in London that people do with their terrace houses. And I also decided to redo the loft conversion because it made no sense. I have ne I've never seen a loft conversion in a terrace house set out like this and there are so many reasons why. It, it just does not work and it was a terrible use of space. So those were the two main things I wanted to do and then just practical things like the ceiling in the bedroom at the back was super low but for no reason and my floors, a lot of them were super slanted. So that was something that I really, really wanted to fix. By the way, I've got my coffee in my cute little ember cup, so this will keep it warm. I talk so much that I just never end up drinking the coffee. So whilst I talk to you, this will be warm. And then when I finish this video, uh, I will then probably drink the coffee. <laughs> so essentially, a lot of the time was spent on structural things. I had some new beams put in. I had some things reconfigured. The first thing that I really saw a change in was the garden. I of course had this stripped and emptied when I had the house emptied, but then the builders came in and one of the first things they did was kind of solidify the fence line. Luckily, like thank goodness, I have the most wonderful neighbors in the world and they are so chilled and they've never complained. If I'm ever there, they're like, how's it going? Like it, there's never any kind of like, your builders are so loud, which, oh my goodness, I'm so relieved. And I have the loveliest team of builders. So, I mean, I feel like if there was a problem, they would sort it anyway. But you know, I, I just think, that kind of peace and no drama in something like this just is so, so amazing. So the fences went in and I really struggled to choose fences actually because I think it really does impact the look that you get in your garden. I knew I wanted something pretty tall and I wanted the concrete posts with the smooth finish. I really, really like how the fencing looks. I actually managed to find it quite affordably. Fencing was, again, something that shocked me cost-wise and I'm pretty pleased with what I got. I did a lot of research and yeah, I am so unbelievably pleased and it transformed the garden immediately. Then the roof came off, which was the craziest thing. I ended up having a whole new roof. I got new slates put on and I did do the actual slate as opposed to doing artificial slates. Like I said, I wanna be in this house for 20, 30 years, which is why I 
made the decisions that I did. I also had all of the floor joists taken out and leveled, which was a huge job. There was one point where I could walk in, look up and just see from the bottom all the way up to kind of, well, they didn't have to do the loft, but up to there, which was so crazy. And I'm also doing all new windows. So the windows, I'm pretty sure going in in like three weeks, that's gonna be so exciting because that will look different. They're being made right now. I keep getting sent photos of my windows. So <laughs> it's so random, but really exciting to me because there was definitely windows in the house that, well, they didn't all match. And I really wanted to do traditional Victorian sashes. So there was a couple in the house that were newer windows that I've had the walls built up to recreate the sash. And then we're gonna do the sash windows, which is really exciting. Along the way, there's definitely been a lot of things that I didn't expect, including needing like a whole new staircase and things like that. And I've definitely changed my mind on things along the way, which is crazy. So my back bedroom and bathroom, which are at, at the top of the stairs, kind of at the back of the house, I ended up having to have the walls completely rebuilt, which is something that I didn't account for. I didn't expect it to happen. Basically, they just weren't weren't safe and it needed doing. So had that done and that's really transformed everything right now. They are back up and the roof is on, which is so crazy. The loft has been completely reconfigured and the roof lights have been fitted. So I did so much research on roof lights. I mean, I tried to do my research in numerous places. So firstly, I was doing a lot of internet research. I then went for first-hand recommendations. I was reaching out to people, asking them questions, like people on Instagram, like so, like friends and Again, yeah, just personal research, looking at kind of reviews online and, you know, websites where people can leave like company reviews, so helpful. And I came across a brand called Roof Maker. I went for them in the end, so my roof lights are electric, which is amazing. And I love the look of them. So they're actually black, which I just loved. I didn't want anything kind of white looking in my house and like plasticky. That's just not what I was going for. And these are so sleek. They're so stunning. And yeah, they're in, in the roof right now. They look amazing. And I'm just waiting for them to be fitted in my kitchen, which I'm so excited about. There was one point where I thought I was just going to do like a big singular glass panel, which is something a lot of people do on that kind of slanted bit in the kitchen. But, I decided against it. I don't know why. It was something I went back and forth on a lot and I'm not going for this like crazy modern vibe in the house. So I'm again, thank goodness, so pleased with my decision. So where are we at right now? I feel like we've hit the point, you know in projects where it gets worse before it gets better. I think we're teetering on the point where it's starting to get better, which is very exciting. So in my front room, up, on the first floor. I'm like, what do we call it? Yeah, ground floor, first floor, second floor. The front bedroom on the first floor has had the underfloor heating kind of mapped out, which is very exciting. The rest of the rooms I am doing radiators. I wanted, again, it to be too traditional. So I'm doing, I, I had to find a balance because it's not a huge, well, to me it's a huge house because I'm one person, but it's a traditional Victorian terrace house. So they're not huge. You don't have an abundance of space. However, I did want to do the traditional radiators, Victorian style, and they're big. And I managed to find a compromise at a place called Trade Radiators, and I managed to get exactly the color that I wanted, the style, and I even got to choose the hardware colors because that was something that was so important to me that it all matched. I really wanted the hardware on the windows to match the radiators, to match the door handles, all of that. That's something I haven't sourced, actually, doors that's on my list. So if anyone has any recommendations of where I can find Victorian doors, I would love to have traditional Victorian ones that have been reconditioned, but I don't know if that's gonna be a thing. I, I'm still looking into it. So yeah, radiators, I actually got my, like the hardware through and the actual radiators themselves are being delivered very, very shortly. And the next big thing is the kitchen company are coming to measure everything up. So I have purchased a Duval kitchen which is so unbelievably exciting. I have said this from the start of the project. If there's one room that I would love to get finished, it is the kitchen. If I can't finish the rest of the house, I will happily just, you know, sleep on a mattress and have <laughs> none of the rooms painted, have no flooring, but I would just love my kitchen done. I love to cook, I love to bake. I think the kitchen is the heart of the home and I have been dreaming of this kitchen my whole life. I have been to the big Duval showroom in the Midlands, maybe, 
four times. I've been to the one in East London also twice and I am that annoying customer but I think my passion shows through and I hopefully think they find it not annoying and endearing. I don't know. But the kitchen is being measured for fit and that is so exciting. That means we are a certain amount of weeks away. It's all, you know, we're, we're on teetering on that edge of really seeing progress. So that's kind of where we're at. My next video will be me picking flooring, tiles, everything like that. And that will be coming so soon maybe in like two, three weeks. And yeah, then I will take you for a full walk around of the property and you can see how it's looking. I really hope you've enjoyed this little update. Like I said, it's been a lot of kind of structural things really. I mean, I'm sure some of you will find super interesting, but I, I don't. And it's like, I'm trying to find a balance of sharing things that I find interesting, but also things you wanna know. So yeah, I'm trying to be as informative as possible. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next one where we're going to find engineered wood flooring, tiles for the bathroom, flooring for the kitchen. Oh, carpets, I need to go to the carpet place. I'll pop that in that video too. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.